this is the Arendelle 1961 subwoofer 1S. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about this subwoofer. Trying to get fancy here at the Chief Audio Man with a desk that goes up and down and a, and a purple light with all my cool vintage gear. Originally wasn't going to do the review on this. Actually told Arendelle I wanted to send it back, but they wanted me to do the review anyway. So we're gonna do the review. By the way, this thing is very heavy. How heavy? Well, I'm glad you asked. Apparently I have to download the manual to find how much this weighs. And the first two pages on the manual are about how awesome Arendelle is. Now don't get me wrong, I like Arendelle. I basically just sang the praises of Monitor S Speaker. I thought it was awesome. I thought it was brilliant. I even thought it justified its price at over $2,000. But their website's confusing. Their model numbers are confusing. And it looks like they may like themselves a little bit too much when you're leading your product manuals with two pages about how awesome you are. We get it. Put that in the about section of your website, not the first two pages of your manual, but I digress. Couldn't find in their manual how heavy this thing is. I don't know, probably 30 or 40 pounds. It's a beautiful looking subwoofer. It's kind of a matte white finish. I think you can get this in black too. The corners are cut off, very rectangular shape. So you have the controls on the back right here. And it has a lot of controls. So this is 12 and a half inches wide, about 16 and a quarter inches deep, and 16 and three quarter inches tall. This is a beautiful subwoofer. It's built really well, but it's a thousand dollars. And I think at a thousand dollars, unless you're really into the looks, I think you can get comparable, if not better performance at a lower price. I tried to watch movies with this. This is a sealed subwoofer, so it's not gonna go boom, boom, argh, like my RSL Speedwoofer 12S, which comes in at $200 lower, and it's a monster. In the manual, they talk about how this is an improvement over their previous generation, and I never heard their previous generation. Again, beautiful subwoofer, huge surround. 550 watt RMS amplifier on the back here. I just personally want to buy it at $1,000. For me, a subwoofer needs to simply fill out the bottom on music. For movies, I want it to shake my chair. I want to feel it in my chest. And I never felt it in my chest with the Arendelle. 1961 subwoofer 1S. So they have two 1961 subwoofers and then two 1973 subwoofers, I think three 1973 subwoofers. Oh, I found the weight finally. It's 43.9 pounds. The difference between the 1S and the 1V is, well, the 1V is vented, ported. 
Rated from 19 hertz up to 200 hertz with the EQ1 and EQ2 is rated at 26 hertz up to 200 hertz. And it's got a cool looking screen on the back. The problem is I didn't find it very useful. This is why I didn't want to do this review. I wanted to be nice. I just wanted to send it back. This subwoofer doesn't do anything wrong, but it definitely doesn't do anything right compared to other products that are actually cheaper. SVS, for example, can be dialed in from your chair because it has such an awesome application, an app that you put on your phone. The SB1000 Pro comes in at $600 retail, and sometimes you can get it cheaper at places like Crutchfield or even at SVS on their returns and scratch and dent, things like that. Emotiva has a whole line of subwoofers all coming in under $1,000. Granted, you don't have the application that SVS has, but I think they perform as good, if not better, than the 1961 1S. Then you have RSL, the Speedwoofer 12S, coming in, I think, at seven or $800, which torches this thing. It's old school. You have to get behind it and change knobs and stuff, but it's like the best subwoofer I've heard. I'm not a subwoofer guy. That's why I rarely do subwoofer reviews. But at the end of the day, and this is gonna be a short video, at the end of the day, I think this is a pretty face. And that's it. Probably fine for music, but for music and movies in my room, it just didn't cut the mustard. I would rather have the kind of low tier previous generation Klipsch, which I think only had 350 watts. At least it shook the room for me when I'm watching movies. It's not that I don't like the subwoofer. It's just simply that I wouldn't buy it. And it doesn't do music and movies for me. If I'm shelling out $1,000 for a subwoofer, it better make my teeth rattle. And this one just didn't do it. So if I was spending $1,000 on a sub, what would I do personally? I would buy two RSL Speedwoofer 10Ss or one RSL Speedwoofer 12S and then take $200 and go spend it on vinyl and steak. Or I would save $200 more and go buy two SVS SB1000 Pros with an app. Don't get me wrong, I love pretty hi-fi. I'm getting ready to do a video where like aesthetics play a big part of how that hi-fi makes me feel. And there is inherent value in attractive hi-fi products. But I'm not super worried about how my subwoofer looks. I get it though, if you are, the Arendelle 1961 something S may be the right sub for you. Sorry, Arendelle. That's why I wanted to send this back. Anyway, if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon. Patreon.com slash Cheap Audio Man. Every Sunday night, we have Patreon-only Zooms. Patreon-only Discord. Patreon-only Facebook group. You can also use the links in the description. I will link some SVS stuff. I will link some Emotiva stuff. Those will be affiliate links. I'll also link some RSL subs. Those are not affiliate links. You can put a little money in the tip jar. Buy me a soda. But don't feel compelled to buy me anything. You can also just like this video and subscribe. Beautiful sub. Just not the one for me.